Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be talking about Star Citizen and the new multi-crew demo and some other cool features that were shown off at Gamescom. This game never ceases to amaze and every time they show off new features it just looks unbelievably cool. The game's design concept has been so insanely ambitious that it's pretty much created a lot of skeptics as to whether or not this game is going to be able to deliver on what it wants to. But this multi-crew demo, which was played in real time live for the audience at Gamescom, showed that they are in fact going to be able to deliver on many of the features they've been talking about. Now I cut up the narrative a little bit, but basically you wake up on this space station, look out the window to see just the massive scale of it, and then walk outside through an airlock onto the ship landing pad and several different crew members get into different kinds of ship. One player is climbing into their Super Hornet and these other players here are going into a Drake Cutlass, a multi-crew ship with fairly large cargo bay that apparently is a pretty good piracy ship. Now Star Citizen is such a daunting concept because multi-crew spaceships mean that you exist as a player within a spaceship that is then traveling through three-dimensional space and you're supposed to still be able to walk around and move around on this spaceship while it's traveling through 3D space at different trajectories which uh, to say the least has got to be a headache for the coders. And sure enough, it seems to be working well here as we enter Quantum Drive on the Cutlass. This is used for traveling around solar systems. If you need to get between solar systems, then you can use jump points. And although Star Citizen is not the first game to show you warping into an asteroid belt with a planet nearby, it's probably the best looking game to do it so far. Now the players here are responding to a distress signal from a retaliator which is a long range bomber, a fairly large ship as well and it is just so cool to watch the players walk out the back of the cutlass and just kind of use their little air jets to jet over to the retaliator and get on board. This is how it's supposed to work in the game and just watching it in action is amazing. I can't wait to go on different kinds of adventures, boarding different ships whether they're abandoned derelict ships or maybe even have a crew on board waiting to fight you. Now the gravity and power systems are not functional on the retaliator when the players first get on board so the first step in the process is to actually turn on the gravity and from there they can actually start to reboot the power systems and activate the ship. What's really amazing though is that they've designed each ship so that you can move through it whether the gravity's on or not and this is going to be an important part of the game since gravity's probably going to get knocked out during various combat sequences and you're still going to need to move around the ship so you can repair and get to various control panels. And we've seen a lot of this really highly detailed ship interior modeling before, but this time we're seeing it as the ship exists in space, whereas before we were just kind of checking it out in hangar, and it was a little easier to believe there, but now that the ship is actually in 3D space floating adrift, it means something else. It creates a world that brings the game to life. And now that the players have booted up the retaliator, they activate the turrets, get into the cockpit, and this thing is fully functional. But another crew has come out and responded to the distress signal. This is a constellation here, another multi-crew ship, and it looks like it's beefed up and ready for combat. Multi-turrets, missile systems, it's got a lot going for it right now. So the two ships prepare for our first taste of multi-crew versus multi-crew combat. This is totally different than just a single fighter versus a single fighter. It's Multiple players working together, manning different turrets, manning different systems in the ship, all playing an important role in the combat or keeping the ship alive. We've got some locks going, some missiles are being fired, ships are exploding. The uh, shield effect in this game is probably one of my favorite effects. It actually looks just like the shield effect from Chris Roberts' movie Wing Commander, and I have no problem with him borrowing that exact same effect over for the video game because it looks badass. Every time a weapon hits a ship, the shields activate with this very cool fluid-like effect, and it just kind of lets you know when you're hitting a ship and when the shields are going to go down because you're not going to see that effect anymore. Balancing the ratios between shields, weapons, and engines is going to be an important one, especially for multi-crew combat, and I'm sure it would help out if there's at least one player fully dedicated to managing those systems. These two ships continue to slug it out, the turrets just laying into each other, and that'll be an interesting part of flying the ship, is you have to make sure that both of your turrets have line of sight on the enemy ship, so you can deal as much damage as possible, but also needing to rotate your ship not to expose the vulnerable aspects of it 
whenever possible, so there will definitely be some strategy in how you fly. And the Constellation is just taking an absolute beating here, cannot hold up to the firepower of the Retaliator. Not to mention the Super Hornet dealing some extra damage and occasionally ramming into things when needed, I guess. And as cool as this explosion looks, it's not even a finalized destruction effect, so there's going to be a lot more work done to the medium-sized ships when they are torn apart in firefights. And after a job well done salvaging a retaliator and using it to blow up a constellation, they then bring it back in and land it on the landing pad of the nearby space station. And it looks awesome, but the demo's not quite over yet. Here we're going to see the players using the elevator lift to get out of the retaliator, which is just awesome, taking elevators out of your own personal spaceships onto the landing pad. We're going to see a little flyover here from a ship that players have known about for a while called the Idris. It's only a frigate class ship, but it is way bigger than anything we have seen in a live action demo of Star Citizen so far. It's a 10 crew ship and it even carries its own fighter contingent on board. You'll notice the 42 on the bottom of the ship. It might be a custom Idris from the Squadron 42 campaign, which is coming out before the Persistent universe. And as if that wasn't cool enough, we're also getting this social module this month. In theory, anyway. It's sort of been promised, or at least insinuated, that they're going to be releasing the social module, which allows you to actually go planet side and explore some shops and walk around and dance with other players and check out the gun shop and do all the kind of cool stuff you would expect to be able to do in a fully persistent Star Citizen universe. And of course I'm getting ahead of myself, most of the features are not going to be implemented in the social module, but again it is going to be there for testing purposes, and my god does it look gorgeous. This game is just insanely good looking. Just when you thought games were at the peak of their visual fidelity, Star Citizen goes and raises the bar for everyone. Now it's been an absolute pleasure to follow the development of this game and check in with all the cool little details and stuff, and even fly around in the Arena Commander module, which lets you try out single seater ships, and we are going to be getting the multi-crew ships pretty soon. It's not a definite date, but hopefully within a month or two. And after that, the FPS module, which is going to allow you to get your shooter skills on, and I can't wait for that either. Everything in this game is something that I'm really, really looking forward to. Now, if you don't have a ton of money to buy really expensive ships in the Star Citizen Arena Commander, but you want to test them out, you can use RECs, which are like rental credits. So you can actually fly around ships and not have to buy them for the full price, uh, which is pretty cool. It's a nice new feature, and it allows people to test out things that they otherwise wouldn't be able to. This ship here is the Vandal Glaive, an alien ship. And one of the cooler things about this is that when you actually get on board the ship for the first time, all the user interface is actually an alien, and then you have to kind of hack into it and change the UI so that it's like in English or things that you can understand, which is pretty darn cool. The attention to detail in this game is insane. Anyway, that does pretty much wrap it up for this Star Citizen's news drop. Stay tuned, I will be covering further developments of Star Citizen. As always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.